in Power Apps, we all use drop-down controls. Like I think every app ever has a drop-down control, I feel like. And when it comes to using a drop-down control, what shows up in the list of drop-downs is driven by the items property. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about all the different ways that we can fill that item property. So we're going to get like hard coding it with square brackets, table function. We'll probably look at sequence, maybe look at distinct. We'll pull in data sources, collections. I don't know. Like I know that I said like we're going to do like five ways, but we might do 15. I don't know. We're just going to jump in here and have a little fun. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so we have a blank app here. And so let's insert ourselves a lovely a drop down control, right? We're going to do this a bunch of times. So when you do a drop down control, what really matters is that there's the items property. The items property is what drives what's shown there. And the items property, all it wants is a table. And one of the universal rules in Power Apps is Power Apps just wants what it wants. It doesn't care how you get there. So in this case, we're going to look at a bunch of different ways to make a table. So for example, if we go here, the first way is to come in and do a square bracket. So when you do square brackets, this creates a table with a single column called value. So if we go here and just say yes, comma, no, comma, maybe, then what will happen is now in the dropdown that has generated a table. And if you look here, it's got a single column called value. Yes, no, maybe. No should be capitalized, but who cares? And if you hit the dropdown, yes, no, maybe is in there. Okay, so that's the most simple way if you're just trying to put in something very quick. You don't need it to be dynamic. You don't need it to come from a data source. You just want some very simple yes, no, maybe. Throw some square bracket around and go. So that's one. The second way is to use the actual table function. Right? This is a shorthand way to make a table, but there is a proper table function. So if you do table, then what you can do is you can generate records. And so this is JSON. So you just can put little curly brackets. In that record there, we might have a column called name, and then we'll do buddy, and then we'll do a comma, and then we'll do uh, animal colon, and we'll set that to dog. Close the quotes, and do like so. And just like that, now in our dropdown, we've got buddy. And so you can see here, this makes a table, and it's gonna have two columns, an animal column and a name column, dog and buddy. So what if you wanted to also add Ferguson and the cat? Right, you'd go here, you'd do a comma, and then honestly, I would just copy this so you don't have to get all that formatting stuff right again. And now we'd change this to be Ferguson, and then we would change this to be cat, and now we've got both of those. Okay, now there's a few things to know here, right? One is that like your column types, like what if you wanted to have a number column? What do I do, right? Well, you could just go here, comma, age, and I don't know, it's like three, and then We'll go here and we'll do a comma and then we'll do age colon and six. I have no idea how old Ferguson is, right? But there you go. So we've got the same data and all it's changed is because we added those additional columns. They're there, right? So the data type gets set by the data you put in there. If I tried to put double quotes around the six, it'll freak out on me. Well, it should freak out on me. It usually does. Um, because now it's like, is that a number column or a text column? So don't ever mix. Like it used to throw an error when you do this. It's not going to throw an error right now. I promise it'll get mad down the road. So just be real cognizant of this and put in the proper consistent data types. Okay. So where this one works really great is say that you want them to choose the number, but you want to then pull out the age, right? So if we go here, we'll choose Ferguson. And if we insert ourselves a label on the screen, the way we would get to that would be drop down one dot selected dot and then there's all the columns animal name and age and so then you can just dot your way into what i say i want an age and so now we see the six so this is the method you would use if you want to hard code something but you need to carry you know multiple columns of information the drop down is only ever going to show one column of information right there's no option over here to change um you know tell it to show multiple now you can if you didn't want to see the name, if you want to see the age, right, you can change what is shown with the drop down over here on the right, but you cannot combine multiple ones. Well, bonus tip, what if we really wanted to combine multiple, right? Well, what we could do here is we could add the function, another function here. We could say add columns and to what table, that table we just generated, right? Because the add columns just wants a table. It doesn't care how you get there. It doesn't care we just generated it. And so then here, oh, sorry. 
right? Power apps is being annoying with the formula bar. So then the comma after the uh, the table, and then we call this combo. Oh, but we don't put it in double quotes anymore. We used to, we just call it combo. And then a comma here in the expression, and then maybe we want to combine name dash animal. We would just say name ampersand space dash like that, and then animal. And now we have another column in the table, right? If we put our little cursor here and hit the drop down, look, there's a fourth column called combo. And so then now you can go over here and choose our fourth one called combo. And now you see buddy dash dog. So while you can't tell a drop down to show multiple columns, you can always use the add column around it to, you know, build that on the fly, right? Like these are kind of the skills we're hoping to drive out of this particular lesson. So there you go. So next up, let's look at one of my favorite ones. I just don't feel like enough people love the way they should, right? So in Power Apps, there is a function called sequence. Sequence generates a table of data with a number of records you give it. So if I say sequence 10 and close this, this creates a single column table called value and it has one to 10. And so then my our drop down has one to 10. So we use this a lot of times we need things to be dynamic. Maybe they're choosing the number, you know, two different pieces and you have to do math, right? Cause you could make this 10 a calculation or a text input. So then that way they can control it dynamically. But let's take this a step further. What if you wanted to not just see one to 10, you want to see the next 10 uh, days, right? So we could go here and we would wrap this thing once again in our friend add columns. And we would say um, my day or date, I guess, I don't know. And then maybe we're going to say, I want you to be today plus value, right? That's the name of that column that just came out. And so then now if we go over here and say, show me the my date column, we've got 529 all the way to 67. Now, the problem with that is that's not showing today's date. That's taking today's date and adding one. So we can go back to our friend, the sequence column. We can do a comma here and we could say comma zero. And now it starts at zero. So this single table, right? We'll highlight that. It actually starts at zero and goes to nine. So it's still 10 records, but the first record is zero record, right? The 10th record is the ninth. But then now in our little date columns, right? We have today the 528 through six, six. So once you kind of get comfortable with things like that, you can start to, you know, build really dynamic solutions for your uh, drop downs here. You can also go here. Maybe you want to, instead of showing the next uh, 10 dates, you want to increment it by seven, right? So if you do a comma, there's a third parameter and that is the number to uh, go, right? So now it's going to show you if we highlight this, right? We got zero, seven, 14, 21. And so then now our dates are jumping a week at a time. Yeah. Interesting, right? So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can build there when you start to wrap your head around sequence and add columns, a lot of capabilities there. Hey, if you enjoy this practical look at how to learn, right? Like with my goofiness and all these weird things, but I'm just showing you things that we've learned from building literally thousands of Power Apps here at Power Apps 911, then sign up for my training class, right? Training.powerapps911.com. We got on-demand classes, we got live classes. I got a live one coming up in just like another month or so. Um, you know, we're spending like four, three days, three days together learning all of these lovely little pieces so that you can build better power apps. So if that sounds like fun, go over to training.powerapps911.com. Back to the video. All right. So the next one's kind of a play on the previous one, but if we inserted ourselves a button here, so maybe you didn't like when we hard coded all those values in there, you could also have a collection, right? So what if we had a, use a good old clear collect, right? Cause a collection is a table. It just wants table. So we could be like coal stuff. And then in here, when you create a collection, right, you could then be like, you know, name, I guess I should have copied. Oh, I did copy this. Let's paste. So there's buddy. And then we'll paste it again. And so then now, right, we'll change this one. We'll just do Chewy this time. Okay. He's also a dog. But so then that creates a collection. So I press this button. Boop. We now have a table called coal stuff, animal name. And so then we could go here and just be like, yo, I want to see cool stuff. And then now we've got the drop down, right? We get the data out the same way and nothing's changed because it's just another way of getting at a table. So whether you did this as a 
collection. So maybe this was on start. Or if you wanted, instead of put things on on start, because we really shouldn't do as much on start as we used to, then the other thing that you could have done, right, if we copy all of this, control C, go here to apps, instead of putting it here on on start, which a lot of you've got code there today, the more performant place to put it is under formulas. And then so we'll call this NF stuff equals table and then paste all that in and a semicolon. And so then this NF stuff is a table with that same data. So we could just go here and change this to NF stuff. All right, I'll put a link to the formulas video up there if you haven't seen that before. But if you've got a bunch of code on start, it's probably a better idea to get that into formulas. All I want you to take away from this is that formulas is another place that you can put or generate a table and then use that in your dropdown. Right, so that's the takeaway for that. Now, the next set here is like, what if I want to get into, um, you know, pulling in data sources, right? Data sources are tables. So we could go over here to our old data source, add data. We will just use my friend SharePoint. Click on SharePoint, SharePoint. And then we're going to use good old fashioned Power Apps videos. And then down here somewhere is the employees list, right? Where is it? Right there. We'll say connect underneath my face. I probably didn't bother to move it because I'm lazy. And then I like how I make fun of myself. It's what I do. Right. But so what's important to understand is that now, right, we have the data source called employees. It's a SharePoint list. And so we can go here to our items and we can just be like, hey, your employees. And now if we hit the drop down, we see a bunch of blanks. If you ever see this, this tells you that, yes, you're getting a table of data, but the column that you're showing is blank. And so if you look over here on the right, it's showing the compliant asset ID, compliance. Anyway, so we change this to be, how about their first name? Where is first name? My Right there, I can't, that's alphabetical order. Ugh. But look, now we've got all of the different people by first name, right? Because this is a table, this one a table, didn't care how you get there. Same type of thing if you start to say, well, what if I want to sort those, right? Then we could just be like, sort by columns, employees, and then sort by first name. And so then now they're in alphabetical order by first name, right? It doesn't care. Okay, so a lot you can do there. Now, what if instead of showing that, like if we look, like let's say we want to see all the departments from there, right? So if you choose a department column, you're going to see that there's a lot of repetition, right? There's two IT people, there's two accounting people, but I want to just see the unique list of departments, okay? So then for that, you could use a function called distinct employees and then comma, and then what uh, column are we looking for? The department column. And now you have got just the distinct list of departments. What if I want to sort that? No big deal, right? What do we say? Sort by columns just wants a table. It doesn't care that it's a distinct table. So do a comma. Now, when you use a distinct function, this generates a single column table with a column name of value. So that's why value is the only thing you see here. But if you close that, now you have all of those available. Nifty neato, right? One other bonus tip. So what if you wanted to add to that list a all departments, right? So one of the things that Microsoft put out, eh, like it's probably been less than a year, I don't know, a while back, but nobody knows about is with the table function we talked about earlier. We talked about how to create a table. With the table function, you can also take a table and add two tables together. So we do table, and then here we're just going to do a single record. And we're just going to say we want value colon all departments, right? That's what you just told me you wanted. And then we close this. So now this generates a new table where look, all departments is at the top and then our alphabetical order because we have the sort inside here. Oh, right. Did you know that? A lot of people didn't know that. So the table function can combine two tables as long as they have the same column. So in this case, the column name was value then we're able to combine those to get better options in our uh, drop down here. Number tip number, I don't know, I've, I've lost count at this point. Another one we might have here is so in this case, we had to use distinct for employees because department is just a text column. So there's nothing fancy with it. But in my SharePoint list, there is another column called favorite color that is a choices column in SharePoint. So this tip's going to work for SharePoint choice columns. Uh, lookup columns, and the same for Dataverse. So here what you can do is use the choices function. 
So you can say choices, and then you would say our uh, employees dot in the column name, in our case, it is favorite color. This generates a single column table, but these are the choices available for the choice column. So it's not a distinct, it's not looking at the data, it's querying the data source directly to pull in the information it needs. And then there are your distinct choices, right? And the most common reason you're doing these type of things, especially in these scenarios, is like you want to filter a gallery and things like that, right? And so once again, it would just be, you go down here, your label, and so drop down, select it. I don't know what color it is, Shane, no big deal, hit the dot. In this case, there's only one, it's value, right? Like when you do the drop down dot selected, just do the dot and see what columns it offers you. You don't have to memorize which ones you're getting with different formulas or anything like that, right? And it also doesn't change, right? Right now there's only one column to show over here in the drop down. but if we were showing the whole thing, right? It wouldn't matter and it doesn't matter what your display. It's not about what you're displaying. Most of the time it's about what you're selecting out of that, right? The displays for the user, the selected dot something is for you, the system to make, you know, save the data, make a reference filter, whatever. So there you go. There is my very quick rundown of all the different ways you can add table data into the items property of a dropdown in Power Apps, right? There's probably more, there's probably other clever things you're thinking of, but like these are the ones that like, I kind of sat there for a minute and thought like, what are the cool things I do? And those are the ones. So questions, comments, other ones you'd want to see. Do you need to see a deeper dive on the table function or something like that, leave me a comment below. I'm always open to ideas, right? I love ideas, they really help. I'm like 550 Power Apps videos in. Your ideas really matter because I'm running out of ideas. All right, and with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.